Welcome to Reef Diary, day 63. Well, it's time to go ahead and replace that Gen 3 light with a brand new Gen 5. So I told you guys in a recent episode how I had a problem with it, and Ecotech said they'd send me a new light. So I'm taking one off the shelf to swap it out, and then I'll send back the broken one. This was prearranged with them. It's not. It's probably not their normal routine, but I am one of their vendors, so I get a little bit of a special privilege here, I guess. So this is what's in the box. I just wanted to show you. Here's our light fixture. And then underneath all this cardboard would be our power supply and our power cord and the mounting screws and a quick start guide. That's everything in the box. The first thing I needed to do was unplug the light and start removing all the wiring. And because I use a lot of zip ties for cable management, I need to trim all those little connections and you know carefully take everything down and put it aside. Now I did try to edit this down significantly from what it really took in real time. I'd say the entire project because of what I was doing and how meticulous I was at it probably took me about 30 minutes but uh, this video will probably be about I don't know 11 or 12 minutes long. So you know from a previous reef diary that I connected a gen 3 and a gen 5 with an acrylic rod to make them hang nice and straight. I used the hanging kit from Neptune Systems Sky, which I thought was a little bit ironic, but they were handy and I needed some cables. So I put a piece of foam over the tank under the light I'm removing. So as I let it down or as I'm working on it, I don't drop anything into the water. The hanging kit mounts in the four corners with little tiny screws and a small screwdriver allows me to like start them and then I could remove them by hand. Using extreme caution, I worked my way around the four corners of the light to remove each screw and nut, and that way I'd have them handy for the next light that they're gonna go onto. Two screws each hold down a cable at each end that create kind of an arch, and I wanted to make sure not to drop the centerpiece or the end pieces or the screws as I worked my way from one light fixture to the next. What I'm doing now is untying the coiled cable or wire that leads from the light all the way up to the power supply. I didn't want that to fall into the water and get the end wet. What I had to do next was insert the wires that are hanging down from the shelf above. And those would go into the tension lock system. It's a really neat system with a little thing on the top. And when you push the wire in, it kind of feeds out the bottom and it holds on. And then you can just keep pulling the wire through to lift the light up. And if it's too high, you can press down on that little bump on the top and the wire will release and come back out a little bit to let the light down lower. And I really do like these type of, I don't know, tension cable holders. It's a really neat system. They've been around for a long time, and I, just, I really liked using them in this application specifically. Now that the light is safely dangling over my aquarium, it's time to connect it to the acrylic rod. And what I used last time, what I'm using again this time, is a whole bunch of zip ties that hold through that screw nut that has a round hole in each one. I could slide the zip tie through it, bring it over the rod and tighten it. And I had to do that in all four corners and basically make sure it's all lined up with the other one, make sure everything kind of matches so it looks uniform. And uh, so, like I said, this project is longer because I was trying to make sure it looked really pretty for the end result. You can't rush perfection, they say, but you definitely have to edit it down for YouTube or you're gonna have people say, forget about it. That's why a lot of times you see jump cuts and time lapse to kind of speed it along. But at the same time, you don't really see what's happening. So this is kind of a mix of both where I cut out a whole bunch, but I left in parts that I thought were semi-interesting and possibly help you do something similar if you wanted to do, to do so over your aquarium. After all the zip ties were put into place, I trimmed off the excess. So again, everything looks nice and clean. And then we're leading up to the part where it's time to level the entire light kit. Now, last time Wes was here and he helped me do this and we leveled it in a matter of two or three minutes. But when I was doing it by myself, even though I thought one side was correct and the other side was not, and I made my adjustments, this felt like it took 15 minutes alone with me looking at it over and over and making tiny adjustments and changing something slightly and then sliding up another corner and lowering down another corner and so on and so forth. Trust me, I edited out a whole bunch. If you're doing this yourself, you're obviously going to take as much time as it takes to get it just right, because once it's hanging level, you're never going to have to touch it again. 
A general rule of thumb, and a lot of times people don't think about this, is you need to have a longer level for the longer run and a shorter level for the shorter run. Sometimes people try to use the same level for the whole project, and you may not be happy with the results. It's just, I used a two foot level and then probably whatever that thing is, an eight inch level, to go ahead and do the, the long wise of double lights and then the side to, or the front to back of the edge of the light. Now that that's done, I am going to go ahead and connect the rest of the wiring up to the top and I'm gonna zip tie all that together as well so that it looks like a nice clean cable. Zip ties are the best part of doing this because you they don't cost much. You can use a whole bunch of them and later on if you have to remove some, you just snip them off and use brand new ones again. So I, have, I buy them in giant bags in bulk so that way I have plenty for whatever projects are going on. With all of that done, it is time to go ahead and hook up the power supply at last and then plug it into the wall and make sure that our light is working. It's a good practice to have those power supplies up high where they can't possibly get wet. I know sometimes you don't have a choice and you may have to put it behind the tank or under the tank, but if you can secure it somewhere where it definitely is going to stay dry, that is always best. Liking this video, be sure to hit like. Uh, if you have any comments or thoughts, post them below. And also, be a subscriber if you're not. The more interaction you have with this video, the more likely more people will see it. Hopefully, it'll help them as well. So at this point, I am now zip-tying together two power cords, which you may think, well, is that really necessary? It isn't. Uh, it's just cleaner. And if I need to unplug both cords, I can. And the nice thing is, there are like three-foot wires that unplug from the power supply above. So even though they're together, tethered together, it won't be a hassle later on if I have to remove one or both. I'm trimming off the tails of all those zip ties one final time. This is the last area where I needed to use any. And then it's time to pull out the app and go ahead and communicate from Mobius with the new Gen 5 Radeon. The app allows me to add the new light and then it helps me identify which one is which because I have multiple items in Mobius now. So when I find the light, I will trigger it, hitting identify, and that tells me it's the one on the right. And then I have to find the other one. So I'll tap the other one to identify and it'll have the one on the left blinking. I went ahead and I named each one so I know what they are in the future when I'm looking in the app. So one just says XR15 left and XR15 right. Just something simple. I also had to install a firmware update because the light fixture that I installed was a few months old and there was a new one that, uh, w there was a new firmware update waiting. And that took a good five or 10 minutes to install. This next part I'm not really sure about, but it, I got the impression that my programming from the first light just jumped over to the second light and they're on the exact same schedule. So what I did was I went to demo mode and I just basically turned the intensity from 100 down to zero, and both lights went dark. And basically, you'll see it here in one second. And then when I raised it back up, both lights came back on. So I believe I didn't have to actually program in a schedule into light number two and then hope it matches light number one. And I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know if that was, like I said, I don't know if that was intentional, but it worked out fine. I'm really happy with that, and I'm basically done. So here's the final look. And the nice thing is with both the lights being the same, I don't have one on EcoSmart Live and one on Mobius. Now they both are completely controllable and I'm ready for the future.